Welcome everyone to this session on AP Computer Science A. And we are glad that you're here to learn more about this course and to figure out whether or not this is a course for you. So we're glad to have parents here, students that are interested in taking AP Computer Science A, as well as any teachers or admins or counselors so that we can work together to make sure that all questions are answered and you can make a good choice as to when and if AP Computer Science A is gonna fit into your schedule. So my name is Crystal Furman and I am the director for AP Computer Science at the College Board and I am happy to talk with you all tonight. So we're gonna talk about um, who's talking to students about this course, what is computer science, what are the benefits for taking AP Computer Science A, and we'll get into a little bit about the course and exam details. We also have an excellent panel tonight of six former AP Computer Science A students who are gonna talk to you about their experience in the class and how they're using AP Computer Science A um, to further their goals. And then we'll have plenty of time to answer your questions. So let's first talk about why we're having the session and, and who actually who are students actually talking to when they're trying to make a decision about courses? So we have been surveying AP Computer Science students for several years now, and these are the results of surveying AP Computer Science A students and asking them, who did you talk to to make a decision about taking AP Computer Science A? And so we know that students are talking to their parents or guardians, they're talking to AP Computer Science teachers, and they're talking to other students in the class. So what we did tonight was we invited parents and guardians to this session so that they could know more about AP Computer Science A and have those great conversations with their students so that they can make that decision together. As your representative for a computer science teacher, you have me. Uh, I am a former AP Computer Science A teacher. I taught this course for 17 years at the high school level uh, before coming to the college. I'll take in AP Computer Science. All right, so what is computer science? So computer science is a course where you're going to learn the foundations of all computing disciplines. In this course, you're going to work on designing and developing uh, software and applications, often called programs. So if you use a cell phone that is a smartphone, you have applications on your, your phone that you're using probably every day, and those are created by someone who um, develops software or programs. Computer science also includes ideas like machine learning, networking, artificial intelligence, cloud computing, virtual reality, cybersecurity, and many, many more areas. So I'm sure some of those terms you are familiar with or you've heard about or, uh, throughout your life. And so those, all those things encompass the idea of computer science. So what can you do with that? You can use your creativity to build programs that are interesting to you, whether that be to entertain uh, others like a game or whether it be to solve problems that are important to you. Um, you, can, you can write programs to do that. Apply skills to a wide range of fields and interests. There are very few fields nowadays that do not intersect with computer science or have some component of technology that supports that. From medical fields to art to music, um, computer science is really touching many aspects of our lives. With computer science, you can challenge yourself and gain confidence in your problem solving abilities, explore ways to help your community through technology, gain skills that are highly valued by colleges and employers, and work collaboratively to solve real world problems. So what do we see as some of the benefits for taking computer science A? So these statistics, I feel like have been around since I started teaching computer science. We have been talking about growth percent projections for technology occupations. Now, in, in this case, it's projected 11% growth from 2019 to 2029, much faster than the average of all occupations. I feel like that's been close to the statistic all along. There just continues to be a high demand for computer science and technology related jobs. Over half a million new jobs are being projected. And now we're starting to see uh, and hear in media and um, uh, the news and in all sorts of walks of life, emphasis on cloud computing, the collection and storage of big data, and then information security. We also know that students that major in computer science can earn 40% more than the average college student. And 
the participation for computer science in general with the AP program has really tripled in the last, um, since 2017, with the addition of our new AP Computer Science Principles course, which maybe you've taken that course already and you're just wanting to see what's the difference between that and Computer Science A. So more and more students every year are taking the course. And so we are really proud that we are broadening the access uh, of computer science education to more students like yourselves. So what is the difference? We have two AP computer science courses here at the College Board. We have computer science principles and computer science A. Tonight, we're gonna focus in on computer science A. If you're interested in computer science principles, we had a session last night that will be recorded and that was recorded and will be published. Uh, so you can you know, look at that if you're interested in that course as well. But what's the difference between these two courses? Well, computer science prin principles is what we considered a breadth course. So it has topics like programming, but it also goes into things like networking and cybersecurity um, and data and, and lots of other aspects of computer science. So it's a broad introduction. In computer science A, we're gonna take that one component of programming and we're gonna do a deep dive into programming and use uh, we're gonna solve problems using the Java programming language to do our programs. The exam for computer science A is comprised of a multiple choice and free response questions. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in just a second. So in this course, students are gonna do that deep dive into solving problems through the development of Java programs. And Java is still one of the most popular programming languages taught in introductory computer science courses in college. And even though some schools have switched their first course away from Java into another language. Their second course, almost 80% of students uh, who go on to take Computer Science 2 or the second semester course, they're programming in Java. So having the first course in Java just gives you that much extra to be able to go into that second course. Our industry partners tell us that Java is commonly required for all of their new hires and it's part of what they're evaluated on as part of the interview process. So Java is still a really strong language for you to start with. Uh, in this course, you will learn to design solutions to problems, use data structures to organize large data sets, develop and implement algorithms to process data and discover new information, analyze potential solutions, and analyze the ethics and social implications of computing systems. Our exams comprise of two parts. We have a 40, question, 40 multiple choice questions. That's 50% of your score. And you sit for that uh, in May and it's 90 minutes. And then you get another 90 minutes to do four free response questions. And we have certain question types that go along with that. And that is 50% of your grade as well. So it's a three hour total exam made of multiple choice and free response. You are handwriting program code in this free response section of the exam. Our course also has lab requirements. So these are larger programs that students spend time on um, where they can just have an opportunity to experience what it's like to deal with larger programs and have um, an experience that's a little bit more real world. There's opportunities for students to do creative problem solving and to write programs that are interesting to them. So some examples, we have a consumer review lab uh, where I don't know if you've heard this before, but uh, some of the reviews that are online are actually not written by people. They're, they're generated by computers. And so the computer review lab kind of simulates what that would look like um, with uh, creating fake reviews. There is a data lab where you can go and you can find any data set that you're interested about. Maybe you're interested in learning more about volcanoes. You go and you can grab a data set on volcanoes and then you write program code to analyze that data to answer questions you might have about the activity of volcanoes. There's a celebrity lab. We play this game with our uh, Google Home where it's like a guess the celebrity and that's what you're creating with the Celebrity Lab. The Elevens Lab is a card game. Magpie is like a chat bot, so you're teaching it to uh, interact with you. Our Picture Lab is provides students an opportunity to sort of make your own Photoshop where you can um, create different effects on a photo. So well, we start with things like grayscale or reflection, that kind of thing, but then you can, sky's the limit, you can create all sorts of different effects on pictures that you can use for yourself. And then steganography is an extension of the picture lab where you can hide secret messages in photos. 
So here's what students say that they like about Computer Science A, and I'm sure that some of this is gonna come through in our conversation tonight with the panelists, but when students are asked to explain why they might recommend APCSA to another student, their top two answers are they like the course content and they found the course useful and relevant. And when they're asked what appeals to them about computer science, their top answers are that they like the logic of programming, the rules, the sequence, that it's applicable to the real world, that it allows them to practice problem solving, and that there's an opportunity to be creative and to create solutions to real world issues. But I don't want you to just take my word for it. So I'm gonna turn it over to my colleague, Sean, who is gonna to introduce tonight's panel. Thanks, Crystal. Uh, so good afternoon, evening, everyone. My name is Sean Jenkins. I work with Crystal and our colleagues here at College Board. Uh, tonight we have a panel of uh, partially college students, partially high school students who have all taken Computer Science A, uh, and they're here to talk to you a little bit about their experience. Uh, we have a handful of questions that I'll facilitate for about the next 30 minutes or so, and then we're going to open it up to some of the questions that you all have posed. Uh, wh what I would ask for you to do is if you have questions for our panelists or about the course, to please put those questions in the, um, the Q&A box so that we can get to those questions as when we get to the Q&A. So first, uh, I'd love for, for our uh, panelists to introduce themselves. And Tim, I will start with you. Uh, can you please share with us your name, uh, the sc high school you attend, your intended college major, and where you live? Hi, my name is Tim. I go to Martin Ranch High School in Katy, Texas. Um, I hope to study computer science in college and hopefully uh, get a job as a project manager or like a combined computer science and business job. Yeah. Thank you. Minso. Hello, my name is Minso and I'm a senior at Connor High School in West Hartford, Connecticut. Uh, I plan on majoring in computer science in college. Excellent, Coco. Hi everyone, my name is Coco and I'm a senior at Troy High School in Fullerton, California. And I'm planning to also major in computer science in college and probably something with journalism as well, since that's also one of my interests. Brandon. Uh, hey guys, uh, my name is Brandon. I'm from Deep Run High School in Virginia, and I'm a senior at high school, and I want to major in computer science and possibly have a minor in mathematics. Ashley. Hi everyone, I'm Ashley. I go to Wellesley College and there I study mathematics and computer science and I'm from Texas. And Trish. Hi, um, I go to UT Austin, the University of Texas at Austin. I major in computer science and my hometown is Dallas, Texas. Excellent. All right, so Trish, our first question is actually for you. <clears throat> Can you tell us a little bit about your computer science story? What made you take uh, computer science A and what are some of the lessons you learned along the way? So my dad's actually an IT professional, and for a long time, I didn't consider computer science as a career path, um, but my dad um, forced me to take the course. Um, <laughs> and after taking computer science, uh, AP computer science, I just fell in love with programming and decided to make it my career path. Um, I found that a lot of the knowledge that I learned in uh, AP computer science is really constantly used in my comp sci classes. I feel like it gave me a really good foundation for what I had to learn in college. Um, I think what AP CompSci does really well is that it picks a really common programming language, Java. Um, it's still used in like industry and it's uh, used very often as like a teaching language. And it teaches not only the language, but also like the concepts and the thoughts behind computer programming uh, with it. So the understanding that I got of like how to program, not just in Java, but how to design a computer program uh, was really useful. Thank you for sharing that. Minto. Yeah, um, so for the first like eight years of my life, I grew up in Nepal, uh, very poor. Um, and then I got the opportunity to come to the US on a diversity visa. Um, and from that, I made the most out of what I got. Um, in fourth grade, I joined my school's computer club. Fifth grade, participated in the robotics team. And then in high school, in 11th grade, um, I signed up to take APCSA, where um, I was exposed to the Java programming language for the first time. Um, and CSA just like really helped me open my eyes to like a new language, which wasn't really spoken, but instead just like written and used to communicate 
uh, with the computers by programmers. So that I found that really like cool. Um, and now I'm um, trying to give this opportunity to more people by doing stuff like this, just trying to um, get more people like me to sign up and enroll in APCSA. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. Uh, Tim, close us out on this question. Um, yeah, so when I was first uh, interested in computer science, like I wasn't entirely sure like what it is. I just knew like, you know, it was coding and I always love problem solving. I love like, you know, fixing stuff. And I saw this opportunity to, you know, develop those skills. And I'm also an athlete and like as an athlete, I never really thought like computer science and basketball could be related, but I found that uh, constantly being computer science and, you know, constantly doing programs and coding, like it really increase my problem solving skills and paying attention to details. Cause like in basketball, like the way, you know, a defender might be playing me or like guarding me, like I can do, I, I can like slow the game down and like sort of analyze it more slowly. If that makes any sense, like you never really think about, you know, the different aspects of your life that you can add computer science to. And like, it really helped me become more bas a, a better basketball player. And also like in different aspects of my life that I didn't really think about, like, it's just like a good, um, it's just a good way to be a better problem solver and like, you know, paying more attention to detail, which is a skill that you need in a bunch of different aspects of your life. So, yeah. I always love when you share this story because like to me in my head, what I'm thinking about is like uh, taking computer science, a reprogrammed your brain such that mm -hmm. when you approach a problem, you're like, Ooh, am I going to guard? Am I going to block? Am I going to go a different direction? Yeah. Like that seems so interesting to me mm -hmm. uh, that that is part of how you are, are approaching things now. Um, for our audience, one thing you'll notice is that some of our panelists have, um, they have parents who were in CS. Some folks did not have parents who were in CS, but they've been taking it for a long time. Other folks um, never took it before they took this course. So there is a wide range of um, of skill sets that you uh, of students and skill sets that uh, students have when they come to the course, and there is no prerequisite. So you're allowed to take the course at uh, in high school. Uh, moving on to our next question, uh, and Brendan, I'm going to go to you to start on this one. Um, what did you love about computer science A, and what were some of the challenges? Oh, well, I would say my favorite aspect of the course in total was just the open-ended projects that we were assigned, uh, like basically after like the culmination of like a unit we've been learning or some concept that we've been building up to, we would like get to the end and it would be like, okay, now put that knowledge to the test and we would get some like very broad open-ended pro open prompt and we could basically solve the problem in any way we'd like. Uh, and what I really liked about this is that it kind of forced us to use our creative side as well when, you know, applying our knowledge and it forced us to exercise, you know, the problem solving part of this course. And like a quote that I really liked that my teacher said all the time was that this was not just a class that, you know, taught you a programming language. It was a problem solving course where you express your solutions in Java. So, and one of the assignments that I really loved about this was uh, my battleship project. Uh, we basically we're just given the very general thing, make a battleship program in whatever way you can. And that was really fun because you get to use all these concepts like 2D arrays and you know, for loops, all these nerdy things. And you get to, you know, conglomerate them all together into this uh, one coherent project. And at the end of it, you can really see the result of all your work and see the result of all your knowledge the to put to the test. Uh, you don't really fully understand something until, you know, you make something with it and you apply it. And it, it helped me understand, you know, the practical real world application of this while also like in a fun context. And I really love that part of the course. Uh, conversely, the really challenging part is kind of, you know, having this massive thing just put in front of you and being like, solve it. Well, because that's kind of hard. There's a million different parts to it that you don't even think about when you first hear the project. Because it sounds so simple. You know, battleship, that's it. But there's a million different parts in between. And you really have to figure out how to break it down and solve each part individually before moving forward. You need a plan. So, yeah. Uh, Brandon, uh, I love this quote from your teacher. Can you repeat it for the audience just in case they didn't catch it? What, what was that gem okay. from your teacher? Okay. Um, this is a problem solving course in which we express our solutions in Java. Yeah. I love that. I love that. Thank you. Uh, Coco. So CompSci A for me was also like just a wonderful experience. And one of the most challenging parts for me was actually 
the gender ratio. So the gender ratio in especially like the upper level CS classes are very heavily skewed in favor of male students. Like for example, in one of my computer science classes, there was literally five girls in a class of 30. And oftentimes there's sort of like this subtle exclusion where the male students will try to take control of like the core components or try to discredit you for your work. And essentially it's just pushing the male students out of the group. And because of that, an important part of this process is basically learning to be confident and having the self-respect to stand up with your own voice. And I think that confidence I gained, like both in myself and my work, was probably the most war rewarding part of my CompSite experience. Uh, I, I, so what you're describing is like a, a story of perseverance, um, but also like right. this struggle and, and this thing that you should not have had to deal with. Um, I guess my follow-up question here is like, do you notice that you have taken that confidence uh, and that 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 new voice that you found into other spaces and places in your life? Oh yeah, for sure. Like since that experience, I've just become like more open and just more confident in general. And like another important thing is that I've been able to share this confidence with other people, basically empowering other young women in STEM and computer science to also pursue their passions. Um, you did something in particular in your school where you started a club. Um, can you talk a little bit about just like, um, not only the way that you found your voice, but the way that you're helping other people to find their voice? Yeah, of course. So at my school, um, Troy High School, I teach cybersecurity and specifically it's the Linux operating system security. And one of my classes was a group of middle students and they were all girls. And one thing I noticed was that they lacked confidence in comparison to the boys like right next door. And on the first day, they were all like, oh, I don't know much about computers. That's something my dad or my brothers do. But that's definitely not true. Um, like cybersecurity and computer science are for all people. And I think my experiences in AP Computer Science A taught me that. And I just was able to tell them stories from my own experiences that gradually just made them open up. And at the end of the day, we all work together to solve the problems in our cyberspace. That's so cool. Thank you for, for that leadership. Um, we're going to move on to our next question, and I want to take a second just to um, highlight some of the cool things that y'all have done with your computer science education. Uh, so, Ashley, we'd love to start with you. Can you talk to us about a project that you did that you were just so proud of, that was just so interesting and cool? Absolutely. Um, the project that I'm working on now that I'm really excited about is glass roof, which is basically rate your landlord for Boston. It searches up like past living conditions that people have felt have been like wanting and searches previous violations with the city and major, makes that searchable for people who are looking for a place to live, which parents and guardians, I'm sure you can relate to. And I love finding this solution for the public. A lot of people wanted to see it. And I saw it in a Facebook group and I was like, I want to see it too, because I want to live in Boston one day. And I want to be able to see um, which places are safe to live and which places are um, uh, not. And in the past, in high school, I worked on a small business director for a small community in San Jose, California. I got to talk to a lot of small business owners who were really struggling during the coronavirus lockdown, where uh, usually that's how they get a lot of foot traffic and business. And they really wanted to get their business out there to people who were maybe not aware. And um, yeah, so I got to talk to a lot of small business owners and brainstorm with them, research about what is that they need and how can I bring that to their community and uh, fully develop this web application. And I truly think that working with the people who want to see the tech happen is the part of CS that's the most amazing. I would totally use that service. So please, uh, if you ever want to do it in New York, let me know. Um, Coco, would love to go back to you. What's a project that you're particularly proud of? So for me, it's probably going to be the project that I worked on in the summer of my junior year. So I completed a research internship at Carnegie Mellon, basically focusing on one of the biggest challenges of society today, which is disinformation. This includes fake news, clickbait, censorship, and all sorts of just terrible information online. And my main investigation was on Twitter, where I basically looked at a framework of maneuvers that people use to influence their communities and the news stories. And so I looked at large data sets of tweets and ran analysis reports on them. And eventually I was able to figure out the story that the data was telling and how the story was being influenced by these messages. So this is mm -hmm. basically including misinformation about the COVID vaccine, for example, and fake news in presidential elections, and even like distorted data about the Russo-Ukrainian crisis. 
And I thought it was just like a really amazing experience. I was able to combine my interests in computer science and journalism and basically find this interdisciplinary field where I could do both at the same time. That's so fascinating. I love this like sort of inter Can you sort of elaborate a little bit on this sort of uh, interdisciplinary thing that you're excited about? Yeah, of course. So I've always been like a bookworm, but also like a computer science nerd at the same time. And this interdisciplinary thing was basically what they call social cybersecurity. So this has to do with how cybersecurity and how it influences communities and social networks. And so being able to find like that point of connection, I was able to just pursue both of my interests at the same time, which is just a great experience. That's awesome that you're able to figure out a way to get all of your interests to intersect. Uh, Brandon, yeah. let's go back to you. You had a cool product that you worked on. Uh, what was it? Uh, yeah, so uh, at the end of my junior year, uh, basically my school does this pretty cool thing called the CIT Projects, where people from the community kind of come to my school and ask us for help on their technical problems. Because, uh, you know, we have all the tech kids here. And <laughs> our job, I was the project lead for this group. Um, and our job was to create an interactive map of uh, a local cemetery in the Richmond, Virginia area. And this was one that had experienced quite a bit of neglect over the years. This is a like historic African-American cemetery. It's like packed with a, a lot of um, people. It's, it's gruesome, but you know, the, it, it's it was very overgrown and people were having trouble like finding their loved ones in this cemetery because, you know, headstones were buried and all that. Visibility wasn't that great. So our job was basically to come along and create a map where people could just type in the name of their loved one and then it would show up on a little satellite map. And so that's what we worked on for about two or three months. And the end product was great. Uh, it worked perfectly well. Uh, it's still in use now by the cemetery. It's uh, just a link and people, whoever visits the cemetery can just go on, use that. And instead of using all these like physical papers and all that, which is something, you know, this is this kind of project really good at, you know, digitizing um, outdated technology. Uh, and they can use this uh, digital stuff over all this like clunky, physical maps that are like super old it's a lot more efficient and uh it, it caught a lot of attention i presented the work to the library of virginia and to the my county's preservation advisory board and you know it was successful everywhere and they're now planning to use it at other cemeteries as well yeah that's impressive did mm. do you ever get any feedback from uh sort of a typical person who would go to the cemetery and maybe get lost or anything like what were the reactions uh, from people about the, the cool thing that you built? Oh, well, we did uh, present to like the Woodland Board, which is like full of like a lot of people who are like, very heavily invested in the cemetery and were like so happy that this thing actually worked. It, it was kind of funny because while we were presenting to the board, we were like doing test names and all that. And then someone on the on the Woodland Board recognized one of the names that uh, was like on there. And she's like, oh, I know that. He was like uh, my, my ex-husband's uh, cousin or something like that. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, so they, they actually found someone that they knew. It, it, it's like this is it's a very interconnected community. People, it, it's very important to, for, to people to be able to find their loved ones here. And I'm sure they were, I don't think we ever went to anybody that was like a complete stranger just coming in, but the people on the board were really happy to see this technology working. Yeah. I hope uh, our, our audience gets to see sort of the, the broad range of ways that uh, our panelists have applied their knowledge to try and solve problems every day, right? Because there are problems all around um, and they've been able to use their skill sets to really try and wrestle with some of the things in front of them. And uh, that's just so impressive to y'all. You know. Um, for our next question, I would love to um, start with our, our college students. Um, can you talk to us a little bit about uh, what you're studying in college and how CSA helped you to prepare for your college major? Uh, and Trish, I'll start with you. Yeah, so uh, my major, like I said, was computer is computer science. And um, I, I did claim AP credit for my introductory uh, programming course. So I think computer science counted uh, and, and let me skip my introductory programming course. And that helped me a lot because it uh, let me take my degree a little bit faster. And so now I have a little bit more wiggle room and I can kind of take a little bit of an easier schedule um, for the next two years. Um, and so I go to UT Austin and our computer science curriculum is really theoretical. Um, and I think part of what AP computer science 
helped me with with my uh, courses was that um, some of the some of the assignments that were included with the course and some of the test prep that I had to do really helped me um, learn those problem solving skills that I would need to apply in my college level programming courses. Um, but I think the main benefit was definitely skipping the introductory programming course. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Ashley. Uh, similar to Trish, I was also able to place out of my introductory course, and I also got uh, college credit for that. Um, uh, I go to a liberal arts college, Wellesley College, so very different structure, but same, I was able to claim the credit. And um, yeah, there I study math and CS, and there's a ton of overlap, especially with understanding like the flow of control and uh, implementations of logic. And um, yeah, through APCSA, actually, um, I applied to a lot of internships while I was still in high school and I was able to save up a lot of money just like Crystal said in the introduction um, even like internships can um, make a lot of money for um, students while even I'm in high school right and um, with APCSA credit I was also able to apply to Google's STEP program which is the student in training engineering program and it's meant for first and second year students but I only took one uh, CS course at Wellesley College and with the APCSA course I was able to apply and I got accepted and I interned at Google's education department where I hope to work again uh, to make free and accessible CS education for um, uh, students young and old. And I also hope to volunteer with uh, nonprofit organizations and work with the community to create more civic tech projects as well. That's awesome. Thank you for, for all that work. For the next question, uh, I would love to go to our high school students. <clears throat> I would love to hear uh, how you're thinking about potentially using uh, your computer science education and in what ways. Uh, for this question, I'm actually gonna go to all our high school students because we are a little ahead of time. Um, and so I'd love to start with you. For our audience, uh, we're getting close to a point where we're gonna, I'm gonna start uh, addressing some of your questions. So if you have more questions, please drop them in the, the Q&A box. Minto. Yeah, so right now I'm a senior in high school, so I'm just, um, applying to colleges. Um, some of them actually get back to me pretty soon, so that's exciting. Um, but I was able to earn a pretty good score on my APCSA exam, um, and I'm planning on using that to place out of some classes so I can excel my um, degree and save time and money um, in college. Um, outside of the classroom, CSA really helped me to uh, become a better person as well. I started to uh, become more sociable, less timid, and I started applying for leadership positions and just um, anything that I could uh, do to like improve my applicant status, I don't know, like just make myself a uh, more better applicant to colleges. Uh, can I ask, what's the dream school? The dream school? Um, well, I just want to go to somewhere in Mass, so probably like BU or Northeastern for me. Oh, that's great. I'm excited for you. Tim, what are you uh, planning to do? How did uh, uh, CSA help you to get to, help you to take those on? Um, yeah, I plan on becoming a product manager, which is kind of like, you know, mixing computer science and business. I hope to study computer science and like minor in business in college. Um, I definitely feel like, especially with computer science, like a lot of people think that, you know, you're just, you know, coding and like sitting at your computer all day. But with a computer science degree, like there are a lot of different routes you can go with it. Like a big passion of mine is like helping, you know, a lot of third world countries because I was also born and raised in Nigeria. I lived there for 10 years. And so like, I understand like a lot of the things like they lack and I really want to, you know, use computer science to, and take you to know, to those countries because they're not really developed technologically. They're really like, you know, behind a lot of things in life. And I feel like, you know, technology can really help them. And I feel like becoming a product manager and like developing software and testing it will really impact those societies. And comms IA is definitely like, you know, help me, feel more prepared and like also again like with the paying attention to detail and stuff like it's it's a course that will force you to have better problem solving skills because you know you can miss one little thing and the whole program isn't going to work like a tiny little semicolon so i feel like you know taking the, this class and like 
it also helped me, you know, figure out that I can do this with computer science. I can build stuff and I can, you know, impact not just, you know, my society, but like, you know, my country as well and other places I need it around the world. So, yeah. Thanks for sharing that. Coco, what about you? What about, what's the, what's the future look like? So pretty similar to what I said before, actually, it's just going to be a sort of an interdisciplinary future, like where it's a part computer science and a part journalism. And I think CSA has just been like, it's actually like a way that I used to get used to like a lot of the um, ideas in computer science. And one of the biggest things that I learned like through these new ideas was that it's really applicable just to a lot of fields. And my um, journal sh journalism experience is basically like a great example of it. Like for example, um, cause I'm like the current editor in chief of my school's newspaper. I've been just trying to push for more um, computer science opportunities to my students or I guess to the student population. And in reverse, like in, cyber, in computer science, I've been trying to go in that social cybersecurity direction. And it's basically just bridging a gap between like technological research and the social issues. So it's like a great way for me, I think, to organize my future since I want to be able to make a change in this world, especially in the um, field of information. So, Thank yeah. you. Brandon, close this out. What's the future look like? Uh, well, the one thing that can't really be ignored is the AP exam. So if you do really well on that, that's a good thing, especially for us seniors, because we can put that on our college transcript and it makes us look like some pretty good CS applicants. So in terms of numbers, yeah, that's a really good thing to have. But in terms of actual skills, uh, I think this course was one that like really put learning into the students' hands. If you didn't know something, then it was like, it's kind of up to you to, you know, go out and try and like figure it out on your own, which is something that's really important in college because you're not always going to have someone to just tell you the right answers. You have to be able to think on your feet and, you know, uh, take control of your own learning. And another, th another thing with this course is uh, there are multiple right answers, but like the converse, it's, there's not just one right answer. So you have to be able to think on your own and, you know, you have to generate your own solutions and realize that there's not going to be one clean cut way of doing things. You have to approach things uh, with your own style methodology. And that's something that's really important to learn as you're going into the future. You're not going to have someone like behind you all the time, making sure like correcting all your mistakes and whatnot. You have to be able to think on your, your feet and, you know, propel your own career, do your own things. Yeah. Can you give us a few sentences on what you think, uh, where you want to go to school, what you want to major in? Okay, uh, I am also a Massachusetts fanboy. Uh, the dream school <laughs> is MIT. Uh, Harvard's fine too, if I had to settle. Okay, sarcasm. sarcasm. <laughs> yeah, Boston University, um, things like that. Yeah, uh, computer science and computer engineering has always been a uh, great interest to me. Uh, mathematics is also a very closely tied field. I love that logic part of it and, you know, getting into optimization problems and trying to make things as uh, quick as possible. And one thing, that I would really love to work uh, working in the future is AI, artificial intelligence. Some people think it's dangerous. I think it's really cool. So I would not mind uh, working on that in the future. Thank you. All right, we're going to shift. We're going to talk about some questions that we have from the audience. Uh, my first question is quick show of hands. You can like go like this if this applies to you. Who also, in addition to taking AP CSA, took AP CSP? No one took CSP? <laughs> Coco, you said a hand? Oh yeah, I thought you were addressing the audience, sorry. <laughs> yes, I no, did. sorry, I was referring to who, who on the panel took CSP? Yes. Oh uh, yeah, I have. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, so for those of you who took it, can you, uh, one of the questions that, was, that came from the audience is, um, was it helpful to take CSP first um, before taking CSA? Uh, okay, I guess I'll go. I would say it was very helpful, but at the same time, it wasn't absolutely necessary. It did provide those uh, foundational sort of skills, and you do get into coding. Uh, for me, it was like Python. We focused on that. It sets up the the foundation level where you, you have to figure out how to like break down a problem first and you know solve it like on paper or in your head or plan it out and then transfer that to uh, actual code. And it also teaches you the very like 
fundamentals, you know, how computers work and whatnot. You have to kind of build from the ground up uh, for that in-depth understanding. But I also would say that if you just want to jump to uh, AP CSA, it's not entirely necessary. It's just a good foundation. Mm -hmm. Coco, would you add anything? Yeah, so I actually think um, it might be like very beneficial to take CSP beforehand, since in computer science principles, I basically learned like a lot of the different fields in computer science. So that was able to shape my future. Like, oh, do I want to maybe go into data science and maybe cybersecurity? It's just like a lot of different opportunities. And I think it's really helpful because in computer science, a, since it's like a very coding heavy class, like the directions I was able to find in CSP just helped me shape the way my projects were being carried out. Like for example, um, like sure, I could use coding to make a game, like that's really cool, right? But I could also use coding to tackle cybersecurity tasks, like writing scripts or just like making like these defensive um, structures in code. So yeah, I think it's definitely possible to take um, CSA just right off the bat, but I think having that introduction is just a lot, I guess more like comprehensive of what you might encounter in the field. Yeah. Okay, so for our next question, I uh, would love to hear different voices. Um, the question is, how did the AP CSA exam compare to other AP exams? How did the CSA exam compare to other AP exams? I guess I can answer this because I took a whole lot of AP exams. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's not like an unpredictable test it's not difficult to study for because you know what you're going into. Um, I would definitely say it's up there on the difficulty just because that you're gonna be, you're gonna get these questions on the exam, like coding questions that you actually have to solve on the spot. And it's a whole lot of applied knowledge. It's not like regurgitation of information. Um, I personally find applied knowledge a little bit easier than memorization. So I wouldn't say it's the hardest I took, but it's definitely up there. Thank you. One more voice on this question. Uh, I guess I can just go. I would say that uh, you should definitely watch your time on this exam. Uh, the individual concepts, even if you know them, uh, it can kind of get a little bit of a struggle to make sure you're answering each question like in a minute or so, because that's the kind of pace you need to be on to get it done in time. So uh, although you should like focus on you know that knowledge and you know, being able to apply it, you also want to get your, your like test uh, testing skills down and make sure you can eliminate answer choices and get to that uh, answer in a timely manner. Yeah. So for our next question, um, there's a lot of questions about resources. Um, so I'm wondering when you were struggling in the course, uh, were there particular resources, websites, um, or other resources that you went to to sort of help solve the thing that you were trying to figure out? Minto, you wanna jump um, in on that one first? I guess. Or, um, Tim and then Minto, go ahead. Okay. Uh, yeah, like um, for me, I use a lot of um, AP Classroom. Um, my teacher, shout out Ms. Hoyt, like she always gave us these practice problems on AP Classroom before every test. And they were really like helpful to breaking down like every section of like a unit. And it really just helped to learn it easier. And also whenever like I was working on like a program and I wasn't in school, I looked upon YouTube and there are a lot of like YouTube resources that you can use to understand concepts like, you know, hearing it different differently from someone else or like um, just little shorter videos that aren't too long that will break it down easier for you and, you know, help you understand it a little better because like there's definitely a lot of resources that you can use. It's just, you know, up to you to find it. Yeah, um, I think my biggest resource for the course was definitely my teacher, Miss um, Corchella. She helped to like, she provided us with everything that we need. Uh, we needed um, from just like being seated in groups of two to like always have a partner in case you know they have um, a different way of thinking about the problem to like the AP classroom practice exams. Um, like even even for the AP CSA like exam, for the like the last month, I think we just spent most of our classes um just preparing by doing like old uh like old exams and just reviewing on those like practice exams and 
in order to prepare for the actual test. Thank you. Um, so we have parents on the call as well as students. Um, and our parents are here because they want to support their, their, their child in whatever AP course they decide to take. Um, is there any advice that you want, wanted your parents to know before you enrolled in AP CSA about how they can best support you in being successful? What advice do you have for parents about how they can best support you to be successful? Ashley, go ahead. Absolutely. I think um, parents should probably let go of some preconceptions of what computer science is and not push like concepts of how Google works onto students who are uh, learning AP CSA, I think you should listen and maybe even like learn along. Uh, I know my dad uh, doesn't code during his work and he thought it was super interesting because he studies math as well. So we would talk about it and we would discuss it and he was basically my study partner. So uh, I would say lend a helping ear. Thank you. Trish, I want to pull you in on this one uh, because your dad was really involved and um, he had his own like background and knowledge and, and Valen told you to take this class. Uh, what advice might you give for parents like yours? Um, I think letting go of misconceptions about computer science classes is uh, definitely really good advice. Um, I think parents who are in IT um, try and remember what it was like to first learn how to program and try not to overwhelm your kid with way too much information when they ask for something. Because the thing is, I teach I teach intro computer science at my college. Um, and I'm the same way. Like a student will ask me like a question. I'll be like, well, I could give them like the low level hardware computer architecture answer, but that's not it's not going to make sense to them. Um, so, you know, if you if you know a lot about IT, uh, keep keep your help in scope. You know, use terms that your student, that your kid knows and uh, and try to get the concept sound and not so much the details of how a computer works. Because I got a lot of that yeah. from my dad. Not helpful. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also wondering, so um, one way to for a parent to support is um, the stuff that y'all are talking about like, while you are enrolled in the course. But I wonder, um, at some schools, the seats for that AP course are limited, right? Um, so there's probably some stuff that parents can do to help advocate for their child to get into an AP course. Do y'all have any thoughts or experience or um, experiences that you want to talk to about um, parents playing, being an advocate for you to get access to AP courses? It's okay. Um, that is a thing that we would recommend, right? That's one of the things we'll talk about toward the end. Uh, parents can be an advocate. They can go talk to uh, whoever's making decisions in the school about um, what courses students have access to. Sometimes that's the principal, sometimes that's like the AP coordinator. Uh, our advice would be to figure out who that person is and then uh, be able to talk to them and make sure that your child is getting access to the AP courses that they want to have access to. Uh, there's a question in the chat right now, uh, slightly different than um, our content for today, but still would love for y'all to get your voices in on this one. And it's what other extracurricular activities are you all involved in beyond some of the computer science stuff that you do? Tim, I'm going to start with you and then everyone can uh, get, get in on this question. Um, yeah, I'm in uh, basketball, robotics. I started a college access club to kind of help uh, seniors and underclassmen learn about the college admission process. I'm in a couple of honor societies. Um, I'm really involved in my church, like, um, and yeah, I would say that's a pretty good, like, overview. Basketball? Yeah. Cool. Trish, what do you do? Extracurricular wise. Sorry, me? Yes. Oh. Um, extracurricular wise, well, I met a lot of computer science extracurriculars. Actually, <laughs> Pete Doty, uh, Texas Association for Computing Machinery. I'm an officer. Um, yeah. But I also take like classical vocal lessons outside of um, outside of my major, and I had my recital last week. Oh, I hope that went well. It did. Thanks, Coco. What are oh, you involved yeah, in? So for me, um, I do like a lot of cybersecurity competitions. And to name drop on a few, uh, there is <laughs> Cyber Patriot. And this one is basically for your friends. You have to get a group of people together and basically try to uh, 
secure a set of operating systems. There's also Cyberstar America. This one is very beginner friendly. So for all of the people like wanting to go into hacking, maybe like um, penetration testing, like that's also for you. And then there's also um, CTF competitions. They're called Capture the Flag competitions. Basically, these are going to be um, high school hosted web challenges. And there's probably cryptography involved. There's reverse engineering involved. There's um, also like web exploitation. So a lot of this hacking stuff, if you will. And outside of that, I swim. <laughs> a lot. Yeah. Congratulations. Ashley. Um, in high school, I didn't do much CS, so I did debate and I played the cello in the school orchestra. And in college, I started improv and I also am a student teacher for three-year-olds. So yeah, wow. very different things. That is very different. <laughs> Brendan. Uh, so I'm the network administrator for my uh, student council and I'm also on a robotics team, uh, First Robotics. That's like my main thing. I love robotics. I yeah, do code mm -hmm. on there and outreach. Um, I'm also in debate club and FBLA, Future Business Leaders of America, a couple of nas uh, national honor societies. And then I do a lot of like math and technology competitions, um, like was mentioned, CTF, I've done that. Uh, and just like some other things like Virginia Math League, Virginia Tech's uh, high school programming, programming contest. Uh, VCU and UVA, they offer a bunch of programming contests at our school. And uh, yeah, I like to do those kind of things and, you know, put my skills to the test, you know? Yeah. Minso, close us out. What other, what other activities do you do? Um, well, mainly I'm in a lot of CS focused extracurriculars, but outside of that, um, I'm, I like to volunteer at my local outreach center. I, I'm a, a NHS treasurer for my school. Um, I tutor other kids in in my school with like their courses, and I run track. I played soccer. Um, played, yeah. And I also like to resell. Y'all are busy. This is great. Um, Crystal, you're back. Thank you. Um, I have there are a couple of questions in the chat that I want to throw your way. Um, so the two questions I'll just stack them. One is: Is there an ideal grade? for students to take CSA? And are there any prerequisites that folks should be aware of before taking this course? I think you're muted. I don't know, can anyone else see a crystal? Thank you, Sean. Yes, I was muted. <laughs> Sorry, rookie mistake. Um, <laughs> these are great questions. Yes, the recommended prerequisite for AP Computer Science A is actually Algebra 1. So there are no computer science prerequisites for the course. We do, as a general rule, recommend that AP students are college ready, meaning they're, um, they're motivated and they're willing to put in the college level effort and work to um, be successful in the course. But as long as you're eager and you're ready for the challenge and you've had Algebra 1, you can be successful in AP Computer Science A. Now, your school may say different things about that. Every school is a little different. Um, so I would, my biggest recommendation and, and all the questions that I read through tonight is if you have questions about how do I enroll in the course? How do I take the course if I want to uh, take it online, or I want to just take the exam because I'm, you know, I've been studying computer science for a long time and I don't think I need to take the class. Any of those types of questions, you really need to work with your school, your AP counsel AP coordinator or a counselor to figure out how can you um, do that or when the best time is. So typically um, students take AP courses between ninth and 12th grade. The majority of students that are taking AP computer science A are going to be in the the 11th grade with some students being 10th grade, some students being 12th grade. But 11th grade is kind of the sweet spot for AP Computer Science A. Uh, they take it at the same time as maybe they take AP Calculus or AP Physics. Um, so that's typically when students take it. But again, the only prerequisite is Algebra 1. This is meant to be your first college experience of computer science. Not everybody who takes CS1 in college has had any computer science background, but if you take this course and you go to college, you have a leg up um, to all the other students that may be taking uh, the course alongside you. 
So yeah, thank you. What other questions did you see, Sean, that you think we should talk about uh, with the larger uh, so group? A couple of students uh, shared that they don't, their school doesn't currently offer CSA. Um, do we have any advice uh, for those students about either how to think about what they might do if they're interested in having access to this kind of content? Yeah, I do. I think that they should talk to their school counselor, right? Um, parents, you're super influential. If you've got a student at home that wants to take AP Computer Science and there's other people at the school whose students want to take AP Computer Science, talk to your school and, and advocate for this course to be added. Um, to, to the courses that are offered at your school. Uh, but if they're unwilling to offer it, they can point you to a virtual school or somewhere else where you can um, take the course and take the exam and get the college credit that, that you're ready to do. Yeah, thank you for that. I, 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 I wanna make sure that we are empowering our parents as much as possible because they are the, the advocates for, for their, uh -huh. their child. Uh, I love that we're sort of hitting that theme over and over again. Um, yep. This is, I'll give you this last question. Maybe it's not a fair one. Uh, the question uh -oh. is, <laughs> if you had to choose either CSA or CSP, which would you recommend? Oh, I think it all depends on what your goals are, right? So if, um, if your goal is, you know, you love computer science, you want to be um, a computer science professional, you want to major in computer science in college, then take AP CSA. If you're not sure if, uh, what aspect of computer science you want to explore, then maybe computer science principles is a good course for you to start with. Um, my son took both AP computer science principles and AP computer science A, um, but he is going to school to be an engineer. So that just fit right in with what he wanted to do. Our middle son is going to go to school for music, to be a music teacher. He's taking AP Computer Science A, and that's probably all he'll take in terms of computer science, but he likes it. Um, you know, there's a large parallel between computer science and music. Um, so he he does love it. He's taking Computer Science A. He didn't take Computer Science Principles. So just kind of all depends on the student and what fits best for them, what their ideas for the future might be. Um, and so I hope this webinar has really helped people to have a little bit more information, to have those good conversations. The conversation should not end tonight. Night, you should be reaching out to that computer science teacher at your school to follow up with questions. Some people ask, are there projects every day? What's the course look like? That's individual to your school and to your teacher. So go and talk to those computer science teachers. I know they want to talk with you. Um, go and talk to them. Talk to the counselors. Parents, talk with your kids. Continue to have these conversations. Talk to other students that are taking the course at your school so that you can make the best decisions for you. And I um, I just love all these panelists and, and the stories that they share uh, about their journey through computer science and computer science education. So um, I thank you all for being here and sharing such important um, stories with, with this group tonight. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, before we close out, there's a question for Coco and it was, uh, what's the beginner friendly cyber program that you mentioned? What's the name of it? Oh, absolutely. It's called Cyber Start America. So cyber, C-Y-B-E-R, start, and then just start. That's one word. And then America. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, thank you to our panelists. We're so grateful to hear your stories today. Um, we will be in touch via email. Uh, Crystal, do you want to close this out? And can we pull up that last slide um, so that we can uh, wrap up? Yeah, so we have some next steps here. Like we talked about, continue to talk together. Um, Talk to your teachers, your counselors, other school administrators at your school, talk to other students, and then um, explore where CSA can take you. Um, did you know that there are 48 colleges, college majors, and 130 career areas where you can use skills gained in the course? And there's a link there that you can check that out. So thank you everyone for attending. Hopefully this was helpful. There will It will be recorded. So if you're a parent on here and you're like, oh man, I wish my son or daughter was attending with me tonight, don't worry you can uh, watch the recording and the benefits of watching a recording is you can watch it at one and a half times speed and we are much more entertaining at that fast pace. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all, good night. Thanks, Mike.